Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the visit that US Secretary Blinken had in Africa. It's been a month now so I think it's good time that we take a look at it. Now before we get started please remember to subscribe, like, share and comment. Before wrapping up his three nation tour of Africa on Sunday, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken was confronted with the realities of America's waning influence on the continent. During the Trump presidency, Africa slipped even further down Washington's agenda. Blinken's trip was in many ways to make up for lost time, but also to learn how to engage with a continent increasingly aware of its place in the world. In Kenya, where his trip began, Blinken heard about the crisis in Sudan and Ethiopia, where American diplomacy has so far failed to mediate a solution. The United States wants to strengthen our partnerships across Africa in ways that serve your interests, our interests, and the interests of people worldwide, whose lives and futures depend in part on what we can achieve together. From Blinken's trip, Washington also learned that appetite for great power competition remains low in Africa, where leaders and the public are mostly invested in their development challenges. And as a sign of our commitment to our partnerships across the continent, President Biden intends to host the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit to drive the kind of high-level diplomacy and engagement that can transform relationships and make effective cooperation possible. So Mr. Blinken came to Africa and he was shocked to find out that Africans are more interested in their development and not in a new Cold War. I mean, there were some African countries that benefited from Cold War and this situation between China and US can be very beneficial to us because you can make deals that benefit you the most with the highest bidder. So I think that it's a good opportunity and I personally think that US losing geopolitical power in the long run and they've already lost a lot of power. It's very good. We've seen what they do. You know, if they have too much power, they will be invading different countries, sanctioning whoever they want. And look at Ethiopia even right now. China didn't sanction them. Ethiopia is still doing business with China. Without that trade, Ethiopia would be in a huge mess right now. This game is uh, one that I think our leaders are good at playing because our leaders are very diplomatic. If you can say that they are good at one thing, African leaders are known for their diplomacy. So they're not going to offend US, they're not going to offend China, they're not actually going to offend anyone. They shouldn't even play this game, you know, don't pick any sides, just stand in the middle and do business with the highest bidder and the one that benefits you the most, the ones that brings the largest investment into your country and currently it's China. In the long run, I don't see this situation changing into any direction. I don't see a situation that US is going to invest in Africa. In a couple of years, Trump is going to be re-elected. Or if not Trump, then somebody like him. And then they're going to go back to US first policies. They're not going to invest anywhere in the country. They're just gonna close their borders and stop doing business with anybody. It's going to hurt them in the long run, but in the short term, that's what they're going to do. So I don't think that we as Africans or our leaders, I don't think that they should, you know, close ties with US or anything. Maybe US could give us, you know, more military equipment for free or something like that. But I don't see them building roads or anything like that. I mean, they don't even do that in their own country. So why would they come to Africa and help us build our infrastructure? So it is what it is. Now, I hope you liked this video. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and comment.